University President Stuart Rabinowitz joined scientists, faculty, students, local government, and utility officials on the last day of a four-day climate change symposium. The event, organized by the university's Environmental Priorities Committee, the Center for Suburban Studies, and Students for a Greener Hofstra, was part of a nationwide teach-in designed to raise awareness of global warming solutions. I have a question for Mr. Swazi. Hofstra students and faculty got a chance to express their concerns and ask questions about the issues of global warming directly to panel members as they outline specific steps being taken to help mitigate the effects of greenhouse emissions. We do want to move forward with repowering some of our older, less efficient plants. And in fact, uh, we are um, just creating a brand new uh, stakeholders committee in the Northport and Port Jefferson communities to look at the repowering of those older, larger plants. We're also looking to buy um, uh, some older plants in Nassau County and repower them. We already have solar paneling on government buildings here in town at Hempstead. You go right down the block to town, uh, town Hall and you will see on top of that government building solar panels providing electricity. Ca you know, not only giving a benefit to the environment, but also a benefit financially to government. We are actually waiting to receive uh, our portion of the two billion dollar uh, energy efficient conservation block grant that was passed for fiscal year 2008. The other thing, Hempstead has been designated a, a, a tree city USA. We have planted a lot of trees in our village. We believe in, in having that nice green look. In taking steps to control energy use and its associated greenhouse emissions on Long Island, Nassau County hopes to get ahead of the national curve on greenhouse mitigation. County Executive Tom Suwazi outlined how in large part Long Island's relatively affluent lifestyle is also a major contributing factor in generating greenhouse emissions. The reason we are such heavy energy users is because we have such a big middle class that's very much uh, using conveniences related to our appliances and our cars and our lighting and everything else. Because we don't want people to give up their quality of life. I mean, that's what's one of the things that's great about the country, wonderful. And we'd love for everybody to sacrifice and be great and, and you know, it's not gonna happen. I mean, it's happened from some people that are responsible and really are going out of their way to do it. People are gonna buy Priuses even though they cost <laughs> more money and they, and they gotta change life patterns. Some people will do that. But to really impact change, it's gotta be a, a mass movement. That's gonna require national leadership, marketing and ways to make it easier in people's everyday lives. Hofstra professor Krista Farmer suggests that as far as the science is concerned, the verdict is in, and the sooner we begin to address different ways to ease into a new energy efficient economy, the better. As we've measured carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere over the last 50 years, and, and in the instrumental record, and then in the last couple hundred thousand years in the geologic record, humans in the course of burning fossil fuels and and going about their industrial activities have raised the concentration of carbon dioxide 30 percent over any level that we've seen in the last at least half a million years. And so there are some pretty potentially serious consequences that we all need to be paying attention to and thinking about. For more information, search Global Warming on Hofstra's website at hofstra.edu.